You know, as you and I do tillage, there's always the question of why would we be doing it? There's costs related. Fuel, energy, cost the machine. And so let's talk a little bit about why, for example, in central Illinois, where we farm, we do a lot of tillage on corn on corn. So this field will be going back into corn next year. And we talk about the benefits of this 11 and a half inch pass of a ripper point. Well realizing, for those of you that are watching, that are south of Illinois, and in the Kentucky, Tennessee, and south, you're probably just about coming out of your easy chair, your office chair, saying, why would anyone do tillage? And we realize that residue can be a blessing or a curse. So from central Illinois here north, residue starts to become costly in a corn on corn program. The microbials take time to break it down. And for those to work, they need two different, three different things. They need the right temperature, they need moisture, and they need a food source. And so for us, we'll start harvesting here right after Labor Day. And as we harvest, we'll still have 75 degree, maybe even possibly 80 degree afternoons. And so we'll come in a field as soon as the combine leaves. We'll spray some ammonia sulfate on, and we will see immediately the microbials will turn those stalks a brown and black almost within two days. 48 hours, you'll drive by that field and you'll see the residue breaking down. And then we'll come in with this type of tillage pass after we've had chain roll in our combines where we've already chained this residue in six to seven inch lengths and we'll work it in, in this case, with the Case 875. But for those of you in the South that do a lot of no-till, Mike and his team never take a break. And you can tell that because you go far enough South, you'll see a lot of red soil. What's happened, the carbon has actually been burned out of that soil the microbials have just continued to work all year round. And so no-till corn on corn could work very effective. The residue's not in its way. One of the things we like about tillage is we like to go down to the AB horizon line. And for this field, that horizon line's about in that 10 and a half to 11 inch. So I'm running this ripper point a half inch below that, the A being our topsoil, B horizon being the next, and of course our C is a real clay looking soil. But we like to run that ripper right in there and blend that AB line so when roots come down and they get down that 11 and a half to, to 12 inches, they don't stop and turn, they migrate right on through. One of the other reasons, and you can see I'm holding this root ball, is we know what? Last year's root will leave a fossil trail. And as it decays, and we come in here in the spring of 18 and plant corn in this field, the new root likes to take the least path of resistance. No different than you and I. We like to walk on an easy path. And there's a pathological effect. And you a lot of times hear second year corn on corn has a negative yield drag. And that comes from the fact that this plant is stressed. It feels that pathological negative effect. So when I come in with this type of tillage, we confuse that root. We blow up all those fossil tracks. And no longer is there a place for an easy path for that to come down. So today we're gonna to be running this ripper and we're asking it to do three things. We're asking for the front here to address the tillage and to create and chop and put that residue in the top four to five inches. The reason I like it there, it's the old fence post theory. Where the oxygen is is where that fence post is gonna rot off at that four to five inch level. It's no different here. We want the microbials with the moisture and the warm temperatures and oxygen and food source to be very active. My goal is to have them break this down as much as possible before next planting season. Then we kind of get in the meat and potatoes of this machine, and so we're talking, we'll be showing you some different ripper point configurations, and what style of tillage are we doing. In this case, this machine is set up on 24 inch centers. And the old adage has always been, the width of your shanks divided by two is what it takes to fracture. So the industry and the OEMs have gone to more from a 30 inch shank spacing down to 24. So in this case, the case, the deer, and a lot of the Krauss machines are on the 24 inch shank spacing. And we'll have a bullet ripper point on this machine. Then it comes to the back. And there's been lots of research and designs over the years on the finishing part of a ripper. And it comes down for us, we like to let it lay as smooth as we possibly can, because next spring in this field, 
the first pass in will be herbicide. We're in a vertical tillage system, so we'll run a chopper harrow an inch and a half at high speeds over this. So if we have our herbicide, our grass herbicide on, I don't want to bury it too deep. So I'm looking for these reels. We got hydraulic cover boards, and then we have the chopper reel, and I'm looking for it to do a nice finish in here. What would be a nice finish? If I threw a broomstick across the back, I don't want to see anything deeper than a two inch divot. If you told me you had four to five inch hill valleys in there, then next spring you're going to roll dry surface in, dry surface and soil in, and you have wet soil, you know, and mixed in with it, and we're going to have seeds in dry dirt. I like this particular type of finishing harrow for our cover crop program. What we'll do is we'll come in, we'll put cover crops right down, like where we chop for our dairy for silage on our vegetable pumpkin fields. And we'll come in and spray our plow down granular with either we do rye or we do radish and sweet clover. And we found that we can rip, we're leaving that cover crop on the top, we can come through with our ripper and with this reel system, we get some ideal stands. And they're very even and very well germed. So it's a balance. You want the ripper disc, you want the disc gangs in the front to be doing some tillage. You obviously want a good job of fracturing in the center. And then you want to leave the field in ideal condition for success in the spring of 18. We talk about three functions. Let's focus on the center function. You know, you and I are spending, and use your own numbers, between $15 to $20 an acre to make this path. And for years, when I was at Precision Planning, Tim would keep me focused on planters. And I kept saying, Tim, as I dig behind my ripper, I'm leaving berms and mounds of 40% of my soil is not tilled. Why am I spending this money and not fracturing through the whole profile to give that root every potential to dine on all the fertility that I have instead of turning roots and making them grow around these mounds? And he kept saying the same thing at the supper table. Dad, focus, you're a planter guy. Well, the minute we jumped into 360, I said, I'm going to take care of this. And I put some really good young engineers that we had on it and we basically said, let's first of all define the problem. And so we know that we have OEM ripper point with some shallow wings is going to create a pretty good sized solid mound about four inches under the ground or underneath what the tillage that disc gang is doing. So as we jumped in, we said it's definitely going to need more wing. So as we talk, and we'll show you up close exactly how a bullet 360 point works, but you're going to be looking at a 14 inch wing that's going to come in and lift and fracture from shank to shank. Yes, we'll have about a two inch mound in between the shanks, but roots just continue to grow. We talked about the three criteria. The actual point itself is designed with special hardening wire with lots of testing and then a chrome cast it point that's attached to this main body itself. And so there's lots of engineering that went in to get it to the point where you and I as farmers are gonna be extremely satisfied with the end product. I'd like to have you take a look here where we had a lot of fun. We got a heavy concrete wall buried in this sand track. It's a foot wide, 10 feet in length, and five feet deep. And you're gonna see here as it comes across here, the point striking that wall and you're going to see the spring on the shank recoil and it's going to go over the top. And we've hit this wall hundreds of times and we're just testing the durability of the point so when you and I catch a rock in the field, we're going to have a satisfied performance out of the point. As I walk across the top where we ripped here, you'd give it an A for the top finish. And you can see we've got residue incorporated like we'd like to see it in the top four to five inches so Mike and his team can break it down. You can see that we're extremely level. So we could come in here and do some type of a fertilization or chemical pass next spring and wouldn't have to touch this farm. Then when you take your spade and you start stepping it in and you smile and you say, wow, we've got great fracture. And then as you move ahead, all of a sudden, you see that all of a sudden you can't get it in. And you say, well, what's going on? Why in the world are we only in five inches and extremely solid? And you can feel it right there. And there's not going to be anything that's going to take that undone. Come with me to the forward 
to this trench and we'll take a look at what we're looking at. And so for years, as I would run these case rippers, and you can see here, we have a tiger point. It would do a fracture down to the 11 and a half inch mark. But at the same time, in between, we did the tillage up here with the front disc. We got a good five inches of loose, well mixed in residue. And then we come to some really firm structure. And the density has not been lifted out. And it's a real challenge for roots next spring. And you can feel it in here. And it's extremely firm. And you can barely get that jackknife in there. And you can see that roots are going to grow around that next spring. By the time this corn is V6, it's going to have its crown roots starting to move down. By the time we're waist high to shirt pocket height, we're going to have roots skirting this and 40% of our nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash is not going to be readily available until it gets secondary hair roots growing into it. So as we expose these berms and we talk about the problems with the OEM rippers that are out there, we realize that this is an extremely popular point. It's a seven inch wing point compared to our 14 inch wing, but it's not about this maybe just the size of the wings as much as it's about the swept and the angle and the approach. Where we're two and a half inches off the point, this particular OEM point is six inches off and it's riding in the shadow of the shank. In other words, as a speedboat wake, it's riding in there, it's not going to wear out. And if it's not wearing out, it's probably not going to fracture the berm itself. So I went after our team and I said, guys, it's as simple as this. If I'm at 11 and a half, I want this to be removed and I want to fracture and blow these up so roots can just grow. Let's take a look at what they came up with on our 360 bullet point. So we moved over to the other ripper pass, which was a 360 bullet. And you can see the effect difference here. When we started designing the bullet, we started three criteria. Number one, and most important was, we wanted to take the berm out itself. And I wanted to get to a point where we had 12 inches of fractured soil so that the root could follow its way through any of this profile. Now, if you measure this right now, it's 14 inches but it's been fluffed up, we had this ripper point set at 11 and a half. So criteria number one was, we need to be able to put a level playing field in. And you can see different soil structures, sometimes it can have a little bit of a bump in it, but I'm looking for about an inch and a half to two inches that's still remaining. The ripper point itself is 14 inches. The additional 10 inches in here is all fractured from the design and the swept. Criteria number two was, it needs to be able that we can pull it. I did not want to have to have a farmer trade tractors and go to higher horsepower. So we took a lot of time and effort to get the shape and the design and the sweep of this wing and the angle of it at the correct. And we took half the time out of it. We started where I was on a half mile pass over a minute, 50 seconds longer, and I got it down to nine seconds by just changing design and working with the criteria itself. And then number three is it needs to last. I realize we're doing more work, but at the same time, I want it to go as long as it possibly can. In our case, we go through the entire season here in central Illinois. Without question, you and I can pick up that this front wall is totally fractured down to that 11 and a half inches in depth. But there always raises a question in a grower's mind with this wide of a point, what's it look like underneath the point itself? And you can see here where we ripped here this morning that we can still get very good fracture. Yes, it's a little tight right here where the two inch point itself went, but underneath this wing, I like the way it feels. And you can feel it feels the same all the way even in here where the 10 inch uh, middle ground is in between the points. It all feels very, very consistent. But let's go to a field that was ripped in the fall of 16, and let's follow the corn through in the spring of 17, and let's let the roots tell us as they grow through this profile all the way across, did we have success? It's a warm summer day, and we use a mini hoe here to help us take a look at the way we've done tillage for years and years. So on this side of the trench and pit, we have an OEM 875 of a seven inch OEM point, 
and you can see the 24 inch shank spacing and the hill and valley effect that's created by that style of tillage. We're back here on this side, we have the 360 bullet and what a difference and what a story the roots are about to tell us. Let's take a look over here where we didn't try to preserve really a lot of corn plants and roots. We wanted to show on the 24 inch shank spacing, the berm that's in between and the soil tightness and density difference. So you can see here where the shank ran, you can see the loose soil density and you can pick up, there's quite a few roots that found their way and like that kind of growing conditions versus where they're at here more in the solid. So easy to pick up the seven inch wing at the 11 inch depth, it busted this out. Then we have a lot of solid in here and here in between those points. We've now moved to the side of the pit where the 360 bullet ran on the 875 Ripper last fall. And we didn't try to preserve any roots here on this half. We wanted to show you we're on a 24 inch spacing. So a shank ran here and here. And I like what I see. By design, the bullet was designed to leave it about an inch and a half of soil above the bottom of the point. So if I take my jackknife and put it in here, you can see all this profile is, is very structured. In other words, roots would have no problem growing through that. And we'll take a look at that behind me on the actual corn plant. So once again, we're looking for a full shatter in that 11 to 12 inch zone. And the wings in this case of the bullet did exactly what they were designed to do. In addition to having good structure where the wing ran on the bottom of the floor, we're very interested in having super structure up here where the plants themselves are putting their root systems. And you can see here my knife coming through here, we have a very soft structure. So not only where the shank itself ran right on this profile, but we've been able to fracture all the way across here. And though it's dry, you can see that this soil was left in very, very good shape. So on the opposite side of this pit wall, we have the standing corn crop here. We can take a look right at the roots themselves. This corn's at the V8 stage, and it's a corn on corn field. Last fall after harvest, we come in and made a pass with the 875 ripper. And you can see that we did about a five to six inch with the front gang of discs to manage the residue. It left a tillage layer. And we often discuss as farmers, one with another, our belief on tillage. But at the end of the day, the root always tells the true story. In this case, you can see here in these corn plants, these roots are coming out of this crown and they're growing straight across this tillage change. In other words, where the disc gangs went compared to the solid berm in between these 24 inch centers. So you can see right here is where the shank ran and then we have the solid berm. The top of that berm was loose last fall. Roots went down and then they turned and they're growing and seeking. There was a large crack here on this profile. You can see that evidence of that by this root right here. Look how flattened out he is. So this root was growing right down that crack and he's elongated and flattened as he was seeking his way down into moisture. And you can pick up these cracks and you can see the roots right inside that profile. So roots are getting down through the berm, having to work their way and fight to find that crack. You can see that here on these guys. Take a look at this set. Look how they wiggled and twisted and turned. Tremendous horsepower on the way the roots designed to grow. And he hits that disc chillage and now he's fighting his way when he hit the actual, then in this case, he hit the shank, the bottom of the point, and he's twisting and working his way through that layer. And you can see it here by the evidence of how twisted up he is. He looks like, you know, almost like a snake in a road. And so this is just talking to us. And it's telling us that yes, we did tillage in here last fall, but it's not ideal, 100% perfect. These roots are working across a five inch profile and happen to find their cracks to go down like you see this guy right here. He's growing right down in the crack itself. Let's take a look at the other side of the trench where we run the 360 bullet. On this side of the face wall, we have our V8 corn. And once again, where the bullet ran, we've got the roots exposed. 
And I'm a corn guy and it doesn't take long for me to get pretty excited when we look at this root system that we have underneath these rows that we've exposed. We're visual as farmers and we always look at what's above the ground, but where we're standing in this field, half the battle is fought under the ground. And so we'll let the roots do the talking here. And we know the way God created corn, the roots move down in a 30 to 35 degree angle through the profile, unless something obstructs them and they have to change course. So where we've done this 11 inches of tillage with a bullet, we have roots that are just talking to us and you can see as they migrating the ground. Take a look at this root here. Ideal picture perfect. He's just working his way down and he's a happy root because we don't see any kinks or turns. He moved his way down the AB level when we talk about the A horizon and the B horizon and it's different for all of you. In Iowa, I feel so sorry for you, your A horizon might be 30 inches, the top 30 inches of just prime topsoil. But here in central Illinois, we're about in that 11 to 12 inches. So we try to run our ripper point about an inch below our AB. And that boils and mixes that in case the soil density is different in the B horizon versus the top A. We do not want a root to turn and run across the top of that AB line. In this case, we've come right through it, and you can see here, it didn't blimp up or down. It made its transition, and it's working its way down. So as I grade this wall, like I told you, I get pretty excited because you can see the kind of root growth that we've had. And as I take my jackknife and I start to work in here, you can see the root systems, and you can follow them down. And in this case, this is a brace root that's coming down. He's good size and he's working his way down through here. But the structure itself should speak volumes to you. And you can see as I work this loose, how it's just mellow and loose. And we're working it all the way through. You don't pick up the five inch disc layer. So if we come in here and we look here at the five inch line, you can see these guys here made that transition. We're over on the OEM side. They turn and they ran for 10 inches across the top till they found a crack. You know, I often get the question, do roots really care? And so what we've done here at the root pit, we position our penetrometer across the top and we'll be able to tell exactly what does the tip of the root see. If a root just continue to grow and if there's not enough openings and the density's tight, when they've sized themselves in a loose density, which we have in the top five inches, then they're gonna turn and they're gonna move their way around the obstruction. In this case, the obstruction you and I put in with the actual ripper points that we run from the OEM manufacturers. So the technology we have here is gonna let us take a look and we'll know exactly, does the root really care? Based on this information, yes, they do. Let's look at a chart of the OEM ripper with a 24 inch shank spacing with the penetrometer readings. Penn State did a great study and it said after 300 PSI, a root is going to turn. It can't enter in and it's gonna require the feeder roots to start to then penetrate into these hard mounds. And we can see the definition of the mound itself and it got up to well to 600 and greater penetration so the roots are gonna struggle unless they happen to find a crack. Now let's compare that to the 360 side. And we can see that the penetrometer showed no resistance until it got down to the 10 to 12 inch range, which means that root is gonna have easy going at that 30 degree angle, feeding on all the P and K and nitrogen that it can pick up as it's worked its way down to that 12 inch level. As I'm at farm shows and work of growers, I always get the question, about how hard does a 360 bullet pull? Obviously we got twice the wing as let's say a K seven inch wing point or the laser point. And so we always believe there's gonna be a little more draft. But to settle that question today, we're gonna have this Agco 1050 pulling identical rippers. One will be set up of nine shanks of the 360 bullet. The other will be set up at nine shanks of the seven inch tiger point. And to help this, we put a digital load link in here. It's a wireless, and so it gives us a constant pull, up to 55,000 pounds of draft, and it measures it continuously. 
and then it charts us the actual draft as we go through the field. And so we realize that everybody's soil is gonna pull different. So whether you're from Missouri or Minnesota or Nebraska, all farms are gonna pull different. This is gonna be a side-by-side -side comparison. And we're gonna set it up correctly, where we're gonna leave at least 30 inches of virgin ground on each side of the ripper each time so that they pull exactly the same. I've taken a tape and I've measured to make sure the cylinder is the exact same extension for the front gang disc. And then we have both of them set at exactly at 11 and a half inches. So we should get to have a lot of fun here and get a pretty good view of how hard or how easy these rippers pull in a comparison to each other. And we have a pit team here with us. We have a track skid loader and another tractor to help turn it around because you can see the length of that link. We can't pick this ripper out of the ground. So we set them in, get everything set. We pull straight through and we'll do four passes like this and then we'll average them. We'll get a pretty good read on exactly what is the draft pulling like today in this corn on corn field. So to put it to the test, we went to a local dairy that had a wheat field that had been cut. After it had gone through some pretty hot, warm temperatures this summer, that ground had collapsed down, something we're used to seeing. They'd also spread dry manure over it with a high density spreader. So as we put the two rippers side by side, the bullet with a 14 inch point and an OEM with a seven inch point, even as we're doing twice as much work with high horsepower, the load length showed quite a difference. It was 30,000 pounds of draft for the bullet and 26,500 for the OEM ripper. Not surprising that the 12.67% harder pull when you consider that they had the style ripper the previous year with that style of point that leaves a lot of berms. So when you come in and you fracture in year one with a bullet and then come back, I expect it to be quite a bit closer. So as we go back to the proving grounds in this corn on corn field, that's the exact scenario that we had. The previous fall, we used the bullet across this 30 acre field. We come in with the digital load links and now we see the two rippers running side by side and repeat it pass after pass, exactly both at 19,000 pounds of draft. So it's easy to see the difference once we fracture that density and we come in in year two 0% difference between the two rippers. For those of us that do tillage, we invest an awful lot into that pass. And we now realize we're only doing about 50% of the fracture. And so we designed a 360 bullet to get 100% of the fracture every time. <laughs>